Trigger here. Subscribe so you never miss an upload. Yasi at DungeonCraft Facebook group asks, Can someone please link to the great DungeonCraft video talking about how 5e is designed for players to win? Yasi, I wish I could, but after 300 episodes, my memory gets kind of fuzzy. So I decided to retape it and put a staples easy button in the thumbnail so we could all find it in the future. Anyway, I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about running independent and homebrew D&D. And that's not to say... I don't like 5e. I actually like the game very much. I like advantage and disadvantage. I like inspiration. I like many of the optional mechanics like proficiency dice. And I like the essential set that takes characters from 1st to 7th level. But nothing is perfect, and to my taste, 5e just seems a little too easy. With its high hit points, multiple death saves, healing word, healing spirit, revivify, short rest, long rest, 5e is designed so players win virtually every time. Dark Vision and Goodberry allow players to hand wave resource management. Don't have any torches? That's okay. Everyone can see in the dark, and one Goodberry can feed the whole party. Player's skill is largely based on your ability to build and optimize a character and read your character sheet properly. The game is deliberately constructed this way so players don't get upset when their precious characters die, because the corporation that produces the game doesn't want its customer base rage quitting the game. If you played back in the 1980s, you knew this guy. His character died, he accused you of killing his character, broke his pencils, threw his dice, and never came back to the table. TND's designers knew that guy too, so they designed 5e to mitigate that problem. Characters gain levels after just one session, and the rules actually say if a player misses a session, they should gain experience points anyway. So if I come to sessions 1, 2, and 3, but skip 4, 5, and 6, I will re-enter the game as a 6-level paladin with an aura of protection. What happens if the whole party misses the session? Does everyone get to level up? It's not the base mechanic that's bad. I love the uniformity of roll D20 and roll high. I don't want to go back to the days of Thacko, 1984, with headbands and leg warmers. We did have Prince in Purple Rain. That was pretty awesome. But still, I don't want to go back there. I like modern mechanics that streamline the game. The problem is the stuff layered on top. The rules loopholes are ridiculous. If you bump your wisdom to 20, have perception expertise, take the observant feat, and you've got a character with a 37 passive perception on a difficulty scale that only goes up to 30. I've read Reddit boards and get messages, even in my own Facebook group, where game masters say, well, if you take that away from the players and nerf them, then you're punishing them for playing the game well. I disagree. They didn't play the game well. They read the book well and found a loophole and exploited it. Then there's monster summoning where you can summon a flock of pixies to turn the party into T-Rexes and make them fly. Come on, that's ridiculous. <laughs> And every new supplement contains options, aka more powers, that players love, but make the game a nightmare for the Game Master to adjudicate. That's why there's so much difficulty finding Game Masters. You got pets and sidekicks, and they can cast spells and do things, and magic user turns can take forever. It's so boring. And I'm tired of Super GM jumping into the comments. Super DMs are a subclass of keyboard warriors that jump in to say, well, it's not a problem in my 5e game. I play with young kids who struggle to understand the rules. Like, they're playing by the book, and if you play by the book, it's very challenging to run a high-powered D&D game. A first-level fighter has about 12 hit points, and an average first-level monster, like a goblin, does 5 hit points of damage. And that means a first-level fighter can take roughly 3 hits before going down. Now, if you extrapolate upon that, a 15th level fighter with 150 hit points, they should be taking 50 points of damage per round for the game to be balanced. But they don't, and that's why combats drag on forever at high levels. I've heard hit points described as beads. Like, you have 150 beads, you lose 37 here, 26 here, 14 here, then you regain 22, and it's just like pushing beads across a table. And the game is so slow. Why are we spending hours rolling out these encounters when the results are always the same? I've even seen message boards and tweets where game masters say, well, my group has decided in session zero that they don't want death to be on the table. If death's not on the table, why would you need to buy $150 worth of books? Why would you need to read 900 pages of rules? Why would you spend two hours rolling dice against a dragon that can't kill you? It's absurd. That's not a game. It's doing math. 
A game is only a game if you can lose something. What kind of fun is that? If death isn't on the table, the game has no meaning. The player character's decisions have no meaning. Playing well has no meaning. Being clever has no meaning. Rolling dice has no meaning. The rules are just a framework for determining how long it takes the players to win. Death and injury isn't on the table. Why does anyone even wear armor? If I were playing in that group, I'd play a bard based on the red hot chili peppers. He'd just be running around in a tube sock. You ever see the Twilight Zone where the gangster dies and goes to heaven and there's a casino where he always wins but then he eventually figures out he's in hell? That's what that game would be like for me. How is it even fun for the Game Master? Like, the ending is predetermined. Why is there a Game Master at all if the players just want to win? They can make up their own story. If you can never lose, games are no fun, and earlier editions understood that. Why in Mulvey BX you died at zero hit points? No death saves. You were dead. And I know AD&D had negative ten hit points, and that's the worst rule in that game. Everyone getting hit by a vampire drained two levels automatically, no saving throw. That made vampires scary. You didn't need an artificial mechanic called Frightful Presence where if you fail a die roll, you pretend to be afraid. You really were afraid. And remember the Tomb of Horrors, Green Devil Face, where you stick your head in and you die, no save? Unfair? Maybe. But your decisions mattered. That doesn't mean you need to switch to an entirely new system. I've modified my 5e books to reflect my own eclectic house rules. But old school retro clones and newer games have addressed these problems. They know having a more vulnerable character is actually more fun. Which is why you should support independent game companies and not just mega corporations. But that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to support me, you can join Dungeon Crap Patreon where you get tons of extra for game content and get my very dangerous game Deathbringer at the link below. Until the next time, may all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. Rules lawyers, I have a sneak preview of the new player's handbook. It's right inside the green devil face. For more great tips on dealing with challenging players, watch these videos.